What's up, hooligans? In today's video, I'm reviewing the T28 Defender and helping you decide whether to get the TD or if you should just avoid it. The hit points of the T28 Defender is very good at 1,537. The armor on the T28 is not the best, but at least you got some armor with the front of the turret at 215, sides 127, and the rear 102. The front of the hull is at 203, the sides 75, and the rear 51. The V range isn't the best, but if you have to use it, you can work with it. The concealment is not the best either, but you can make do with it. The DPM is on the lower side for a tier 8 TD at 2108. The magazine reload time is pretty long at almost 21 seconds. The shell reload time is decent at 6.67 seconds and you get 3 shells in the magazine. The penetration isn't the best but it is okay to work with. It will struggle to pin more heavily armor tier 8 and 9s with the AP at 263, APCR 284 and the AG at 66. The damage is pretty average for a TD with the AP at 400, APCR 340, and the HE at 515. Aiming time and dispersion isn't the greatest at almost 5 seconds and 0.362 respectively. The gun elevation is alright at 15 degrees and the gun depression is very good at 10 degrees. The gun turn limit to the left and right is 143 degrees, so you will not be able to fully rotate the turret. The T28 Defender is not the fastest TD with the top speed going forward at 30, in reverse 12, and the average speed at 26. Six. Stay with your team, don't get left behind, and you should be fine. If you're all by yourself, you'll easily get destroyed. The turn rates aren't the best with the turret at 19.44 and the hull at 32.31 degrees a second. The terrain crossing capacity and engine power look alright for the Defender. I'll flash the consumables, provisions, ammunition, and equipment on the screen. That's just how I like to use the T28 Defender. The credit coefficient is at 170%, so it'll make an okay amount of credits for you. The T28 looks pretty well armored, right? Well, not really. When going against against tanks with higher pin they'll easily tear through your upper hull like butter. Most people will pin your cheeks and definitely your cupolas. You'll mainly get bounces from your gun mantlet, the outer parts of the cheeks, if you angle your front hull a little bit and if you put the gun up to shield your cupolas. I would recommend wiggling your hull and turret to make it more difficult to pin, put your gun up and try to shield your cupolas and put it in a hull down position. Everyone will be able to pin your sides but you do have some spaced armor right here and obviously everyone will pin your rear. The T28 Defender is slow. Most of the stats are average if not below average for a tier 8 TD. So how would you play the T28 and what are some tactics that will help you play the tank? The defender is heavily team reliant so you will have to rely on the support of your team to be most effective and stay alive. Peekaboo is okay, you'll get one shot off unless the enemy isn't paying attention to you. Trading is alright as long as you don't take too much damage and you have enough HP. You can go frontline in the T28, it won't be the best but you can do it if you know what you're doing. Going hull down is pretty effective, especially if you use your gun depression to your advantage on a hill or ridgeline. Just watch out for your cupolas and cheeks. It's not the best at sniping long range, but it will perform better up close. For 1v1s, it depends on your HP, the alpha and reload speed of the enemy, and if you could clip them out. All of these tactics depend on how the battle is going and the situation you find yourself in. Stay with your team, use common sense, and you should be fine. If you think I left any important information or tactics out, leave them in the comments below. I got two replays for you, both of them are against tier 8 and 9. These battles will show you how to effectively play the T28 Defender. I decided to push into a very strong position that is effective with tanks that have good gun depression like the T28. You just have to be careful of the enemy on the hill to your right. I noticed that the Yag Tiger pushed up a little bit too aggressively so I get a shot into him and he starts pulling back. I check the right side to make sure that those enemies do not have any shots on me. I start looking for my next target when I notice the RHM so I start aiming in hoping that I could get a shot off into him and of course it ends up hitting the rails. He starts pulling back and I try to see if I could get my last shot off but he gets out of sight and I don't want to risk unnecessary damage just to get one shot off. There's the Yag Tiger. I try to switch to APCR and get a shot off but before I can he pulls back into cover. But there's the Rev all alone and out in the open so I get my last shot into him. And I take a nasty hit from that Yag Tiger in return. I'm on the long reload so I'm gonna pull back and just see how the battle is going. I'm looking at the minimap and I notice a medium tank flanking us. I turn around to check and it is the Progetto 46. I'm almost done with my reload so I start pushing up in hopes that my team will follow me. I end up taking out the Rev with the support of my team. The next closest target is the 432 and my team lowers him down to a one shot. So obviously I'm gonna send him to the garage. I have one shot and the T-54 is rushing our IS-3 defender. I try to help him out, aim in, and miss. That's a little embarrassing. Let's not talk about that. I'm on that 21 second reload, so I'm gonna chill and just observe the battle to see what's going on. The t rands are shooting at our teammates behind us and we got two enemies off to our left. I was going to put pressure on the tier nines and have them focus me so my teammates could finish off the med and light. Our team ends up taking out the 54 and the Progetto decides 
to start rushing us. Why did he start doing that? He had to have known he would have gotten deleted in two seconds. I want to know the thought process that he went through that rushing the entire enemy team was a good idea. We finish him off, I switch to APCR, and I start pushing up on this hill to use as cover and get a shot into the Ag Tiger. We end up trading, and that wasn't really a good trade, but my team ends up taking him out anyway. All that's left is the ISA, and we're only going to get one shot into him before our team ends up taking him out, giving us the win. We did 2.7k damage, got the first class, did a little bit of assisted damage, and got three tanks destroyed. We made an okay amount of credits and got second on the leaderboard for this battle. This replay is going to be so good for you guys just to learn from. I literally use everything that we talked about earlier in the video all in this one battle, and we end up getting a mastery. Definitely pay attention to this part. We push to the left hand side, and I'm being pretty aggressive getting into a semi hull down position. I am doing this because my entire team is behind me, so if the enemy decides to just full on rush me, they could easily have my back and support me. The EXP is pushing our right hand side, so I snap a shot into him, and the IS3 decides to take this opportunity to pull out and get a shot into me. I track him, hoping my team could punish him. The EXP is being focused by at least two of my friendly tanks, so I decide to get one more shot into him, helping out my team, and they end up taking him out. While I'm on this long reload, I decide to reposition into a better spot so I can get more shots into the enemy team. I'm keeping eyes on the battle to see how it's going, and it seems like the entire enemy team decided to push over this side as well. I'm going to keep focusing that IS-3 because one, he's the only guy I have shots on right now, and two, if I get my entire magazine into him, he'll be a definite one shot for anyone on my team. I get the first shot into him and pull back into cover just in case he decides to focus me. He just fired off his shot, so I know it's okay for me to pull out and get the second one into him, tracking him, and hopefully my team could finish him off, but it does not look like they're getting shots into him, so I pull out again, get the final shot into him, and he is a definite one shot for my team. I noticed that the Yag is over on the right hand side of the map. I don't know if he got lost or didn't get the memo that his team was pushing over here, but he's over there. And our team finally takes out that IS-3. Our team is focusing that ML2, so I pull out, seeing if I can get a shot into him, but he starts pulling back into cover and I'm not going to be able to get a shot off into him in time. So I switch over to the T-92 and snap a shot into his turret. If I get one more shot off, it will lower him down to a one shot. We hit him and end up getting an ammo rack. You gotta love those ammo racks, am I right? It looks like our team could handle the ML2 since he's a one shot. So I decided to go on a full reload and start pushing towards that waffle tractor in Leo PTA. Our yo ends up taking out that ML2. I pause for a second and try to figure out what the leopard PTA is doing. And to me, it seems like he is going to try and flank us. I start pushing forward to protect our T95 in case the Leo came up right here. But instead, he's still going down that ravine or whatever you want to call it. So I keep chasing after him and get a very nice HE shot into his back. Side. The ISA rushes in, gets a shot into the Leo, rams him, and I finish off that Leo with a HE splash. And all that's left to deal with is that Yag Tiger that ended up getting lost. Is the T28 Defender worth it? Well, not really. I personally love the T28 and its playstyle, but let's be real for a second. The stats are average, if not below average, and there's nothing really special about this tank other than the three round magazine. If you like the playstyle of the T28 prototype, then yes, get the T28 Defender. It's the same thing but with better stats and an auto reloading gun. But for everyone else, not so much. There are so many more tier 8 premium TDs that could easily outclass the T28 Defender any day. What do you think of the T28 Defender? Do you agree or disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this review, check this one out. I think you'll like it too.